Hello, welcome back to Tactical Tuesday with Johnny Tiger on May thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. Of course, if you have been following the last few episodes, then you know we are probably going to do more with Yetin Choke,、um, because there is still quite a bit more we can do on this subject alone.、Uh, If you guys are getting sick and tired of this,、uh, just let me know in the comment section, and we can、uh, maybe do something else for a little while.、Uh, most of the time, however, I do like to、uh, finish one thing before moving on to another thing, just so、uh, aesthetically the、uh, the videos would at least group closer together, so people wouldn't have to look all over the playlist for them.、Uh, so. Guillotine choke. We have been doing guillotine choke for at least I think eight, ten episodes now, so you should be very familiar with this by now. But just in case, if this is the first video in this series that you're watching and you have no idea what we're talking about, guillotine choke is when your opponent somehow is bent over, coming towards you, their head coming towards you. Maybe they're trying to grab your leg. Maybe they're trying to grab you around the waist. Maybe they're trying to headbutt you or tackle you, or maybe you just kick them in the groin and they bend over, and you just casually drape your arm, put across the back of their neck, come around the side and front. Okay, now his head is caught under my arm like this, and then I reach around, grab my own wrist with my free hand. And I start arching my back and cranking this up. Okay, if you have never had this done to you, you have no idea how bad this is. Like getting caught in a guillotine choke, even for those people who know what to do, is bad. If if you don't know what to do, you literally can die here, right? If I catch someone like this and start shaking, jerking them around. Or just keep choking. It doesn't take me that much energy. I can keep this up all day, right? But the person can't breathe. Worst thing is, it's not just your breathing that you have to concern about. Getting choke because the choke is applied onto the front of your throat when your head is pulled up. So this will trigger gag reflex. The moment you start coughing and gagging and you can't get any air, that's it. Okay, you're done. So be very careful with this.、Uh, when you guys are working with friends, don't go crazy with this. You can seriously damage each other's neck if you get carried away. Today I'm going to show you guys、um, a little transition that is more useful, more useful in I would say in sparring and wrestling and.、Uh, Um, uh, tournament and pursuing jujitsu.、Uh, if you're fighting in an environment where the floor is soft like this, right, and there's nice and clean rules, everyone's friends, and well, maybe not everyone's friend, but there, there's rules. You're not supposed to suddenly pull out a knife and shank each other.、Uh, your friends are not supposed to suddenly jump in with their steel toe boots and stomp each other's he-、uh, uh, the person's head in. Okay, so. The, what I'm going to show you guys today is more for sport fighting.、Uh, that is not to say that it can't be used for、uh, self-defense, but、uh, honestly, for self-defense, I recommend against it, just because you spend too much time rolling on the ground in the end. Okay, it is, but、uh, you might need it if the person is taking you down to the ground. At least you know what to do. All right, so. The person is coming at me, and I kick them in the groin, and I get in on my nice and cool guillotine choke. But the person keeps pushing, pushing back, and I am falling down to my knee because I rather do this, I rather go down on my knee than sitting down on my butt, right? If I have to sit down on my butt, and the person is still kind of half standing like this, that's not good. I, I, I'm going to lose my leverage. So. If the person keep pushing and I'm losing my ground, I'm losing my balance. I much rather drop down on one knee, okay, 
trust my money because at least this way I can still put my weight on the person's shoulder and back of their head, back of their neck. I can still keep them down. Okay. Now, once I go down one knee, what do I do? Here is what I'm going to show you guys today. Nice little transition into what I call the reverse and the counter choke. I know that there's probably those of you that do a lot of jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu, you probably say that's not a reverse and a counter. This has got some cool name to it, right? It's it's been almost uh, it's been almost 15 years since I did my Brazilian jujitsu, so I don't remember all the names of what choke is what. I call this a reverse anaconda because it, the, the mechanic is very similar to an anaconda choke, except you are on the ground and you are uh, facing the wrong way, right? So if you know the proper name, if you know a proper name for this, leave it in the comment section, right? Now, until then, we just call this a reverse anaconda. So we, are, we, we got this nice, tight guillotine choke, the person is coming forward like a bull, like a Russian bull, and because I don't want to fall down on my butt, I drop down on one knee, keeping my shoulder forward, my chest down, so I can keep the weight on them, but I don't want to stay here all night, right, because this is taking going to take a lot of energy, so I am going to keep my choking hand, in this case, my choking hand is my right hand. I keep my choking hand where it is. I let go with my left hand, okay? So I'm no longer holding on to my own wrist. With my left hand, I'm going to reach under the armpit, like I'm doing a seatbelt grip, okay? So rather than grabbing my own wrist, I'm reaching under the armpit and hugging them this way. So my left arm is going through under the armpit, my right arm still under the neck. And then I'm going to clasp my hand. You guys probably can't see this. I'm going to clasp my hand together like this or just grab my own wrist after I thread my left arm through. So now rather than a guillotine, I have to set up for a nice anaconda choke, except I'm facing the wrong way, right? And you can't start choking yet. You can't choke the person from here. So what you want to do, once you establish this kind of a seat belt and a counter grip, you want to push with your leg so the person fall to the side and you come down on top of their arm like this. So I have my, I still have the neck trapped, except now the arm is trapped against the neck and I have my full weight on top of the arm and my arms still holding it tight okay i can just rest here doesn't take that much energy right if i rest here eventually their own arm will suffocate them now some people have asked me why do you push forward in that takedown can't you so let's say i go down on my knee i change my guillotine choke to my anaconda grip can't you sit back and roll the other way and choke from here yes i can however that's not ideal because the person end up on top of you so if you are super, super strong, and you can hold your, you can squeeze with your arm for a long time, that's fine. But you are eventually going to run out of energy. And if the person's on top of you, that's going to be really bad for you. So my rule is, if I'm going to the ground, whenever possible, I'm going to go on top rather than having them on top of me even though it's the same type of choke, either way. Now, with the uh, training dummy, 
might be a little bit difficult to see the form. So I'm going to shadow uh, shadow this, shadow box this, uh, so you guys can see how the body position should go. Someone come in at me, I drop down for my guillotine choke around their neck, right? Guillotine choke right here. They still push forward, so I drop down on one knee. From here, I keep my shoulder forward so they can't stand up. And I'm going to let go with my support hand. If, if my left hand, in this case, my left hand is going to reach under the armpit around the upper torso. And then I'm going to clasp, either clasp my hand together or reestablish the grip on my wrist. And then once I have this new grip established, all I do is push forward with my leg so he falls to his side and me sprawling on top of him with his arm and leg, arm and head trapped in my grip. And then all I have to do is keep applying my body weight on his arm and he won't be able to breathe. This is a, uh, I wouldn't say super advanced, but it's a little bit more advanced than a lot of the beginner stuff, especially on a video. So when you guys try this, if you have a partner to try this with, be very careful. Don't slam each other down. Don't uh, like body check each other. Don't smoosh each other into the ground. Okay, be nice when you practice this. Uh, in fact, a lot of time, when you're practicing with a partner, you might just want to skip the whole takedown part initially and just say, okay, now I got my grip uh, and uh, we are going to go down to the ground. So let your partner roll over themselves rather than slamming them down. And then you'll follow them down and continue the motion from there. Thank you for checking out today's Tactical Tuesday. We'll be back again tomorrow for some Wisdom Wednesday. For now, have a good night.